Hey everybody, Joe Cortez and James Burns of FrontRowPreps.com, powered by Chicken Ranch Casino and Golden Bear Physical Therapy. We're coming to you today from Daniel Teixeira Memorial Field here at Sierra High School in Manteca, California, where, as you can see behind us, the Timberwolves are preparing for this week's game of the week against Oakdale High at the Corral in Oakdale. Burnsy, this is a must-win game for both teams. The loser has two league losses in the Valley Oak League, and that's not going to cut it. Yeah, this, I mean, this, in years past, it's, you know, it's always been that round robin with uh, Central Catholic, Manteca, Oakdale. Yeah, Oakdale. Oakdale. And if you were going to get a piece of that prize, and we've seen the title share in years past, it's always been one loss, one loss. And you're absolutely right. The loser of this game has two losses, and they can pretty much count themselves out of the running. Not going to, I mean, they're still going to have postseason aspirations. Sure, sure. Uh, but uh, their, their hopes of a VOL title will evaporate. And we should say mathematically, of course, they're alive, but realistically, no shot. Yeah. No shot. Yeah. Who do you like in that one? I'm actually going to go with Sierra. I'm going to go with Sierra in this one. Uh, a mild upset. You know, in talking to a lot of people that, that follow the VOL, uh, that have seen these teams, they ha there's a feeling that Sierra is going to beat somebody, mm -hmm. right? That they're going to be, they're going to break up the establishment on top of the VOL. Well, they've already played Central and they played them well. Uh, a lot of mistakes in that one. They felt like it should have been a much closer game. It still ended up being pretty close yeah. because of Kimani Stanley, the yeah. running back. Um, so you take Central Catholic off the board. Now it leaves them with just Oakdale and Manteca. And, and the thing is, is that Oakdale at the Corral has been so good over the years, Jody. For decades. But, but this season, they've lost three times. You know, And last week, they lost to Manteca after having a 20-point lead. I think that, that they might be susceptible. Uh, and Sierra's coming off a bye. They've had two weeks to prepare for mm -hmm. the Mustangs. They've got a veteran offensive line and a running game that is as good as any in the southern half of the Sac Joaquin section. I'm gonna go with the Sierra Timberwolves on the road. Okay, to I'm get gonna, a to get a rare win at the crowd. I'm gonna go with Oakdale. Yeah. I just the law of averages say it can't happen a fourth time. Yeah, and that's what I'm and that's what I'm big. Sometimes also, a bye can break up a little momentum you have. Yeah. I think Oakdale might be the more desperate team right now. Uh, and gotta remember, they did lead 20 to nothing on Manteca. They end up losing that game. Yeah, and they end up losing badly. Yeah, but. But they were outperforming Manteca early on in that game. Uh, I'm going to go with the Mustangs okay. in our game of the week. Okay, let's look at some other games from around the region. Uh, one game that we wanted to talk about, Waterford at Mariposa. It's Mariposa's homecoming, but it's going to be in Waterford. Yeah, how does that happen? Because of the fires. <laughs> uh, because of the fires down south. Cal Fire has pretty much taken over yeah. Mariposa's home field, the Mariposa County Fairgrounds. They're staging, all their trucks are there, so they're not gonna be able to play. Manteca, I'm sorry, Mariposa has to take it on the road for their homecoming. What do you say? You know, I just, I, you, you look at Mariposa and they have to be one of the most resilient programs yes. uh, in the front row preps region. Absolutely. In all of the Sac Joaquin section. I feel like every year, that whenever whenever this, this season rolls around and there's the threat of fires, um, it completely takes over their town, their community, mm -hmm. uh, and it really breaks up the football season. And obviously, when, when there's a, uh, an incident like that, a catastrophe like that, when fires are sweeping through uh, the mountains and it's, and it's causing as much havoc as it, as it does, football becomes sort of Secondary. an afterthought, right? Absolutely. But uh, this program still finds a way to, 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 to compete, to make, do. To, make, to make it out there every Friday. They have to be one of the most resilient bunches. Uh, I, it's going to be interesting to see how logistically they move homecoming down to Waterford, uh, but I don't think it changes the result. I, I think if we're picking a winner in this game, I like the Grizzlies. I do too, Hawkins. Mariposa in this one. Uh, let's take a look at a Western Athletic Conference League, Western Athletic Conference matchup between Las Vanas and the surprising Johansson Vikings. Played at Carlisle Stadium this Friday night. Yeah, I like uh, I, I like Las Vanas in this one, uh, and that. That doesn't mean uh, that's not a, that's not a jab at Johansson in any way. The, what they've done this this fall uh, has been has been refreshing, and it's been one of the great stories. You know, you and I, have, having worked at the Modesto B for years, and, and watched guys like uh, Grant Janacy take yeah. over the program and really try to breathe enthusiasm and energy into that program, and then Scott Sikuski, who came over uh, from East Union, and just kind of plugging away, picked up where uh, Janacy left off. Um, it's good to see the Vikings having a little bit of success because like we like we talked about at this point of the year they've, they've 
taking themselves out of any kind of running for yeah. playoffs or, or league titles, yeah. typically. Now, this season is different. Typically, they are mathematically eliminated by October, literally. Yeah. And you talk about plugging away, it has been one of these one of these plug away, just chip and chip and yeah. chip and try to build and build and build, and Sikuski's getting it done. Uh, I, too, am going to go with Las Banas. They've won a couple of games. I think they're a little getting hot at the right time. Uh, again, taking nothing away from Johansson, and even if Johansson loses in this game, it's their first league loss. Yeah, they can still come back still and, have shot, and yeah. still have a shot at a at a league title. Uh, moving to the Central California Conference League, as I said just a minute ago, uh, my alma mater, Merced, traveling up Highway 99 to take on View Hat Colony, number two in our large school rankings. Who do you like in this one? I like the Thunder in this one. I think the Thunder. Uh, the Thunder have lived up to the billing. You know, we thought that this was the season that they would ascend to the top of the CCC, and, and they just come out and they proved it week in and week out that they were the better team in their matchup. And I think to this point, they are clearly the favorite in the CCC. Uh, as much as we love the Bears, you and I both, and I know you love them uh, more dearly than I do, uh, the Thunder are, the, the Thunder, the, the, this is this is their season. Euless Dixon is, is phenomenal. He might be, he might be the, the, the regional player of the year, the way he is returning kicks and affecting games in all three phases. Um, I like the Thunder in this one. I, I hope that there's going to be a lot of fireworks. There's going to be a ton of athletes on the field. Um, uh, but the Thunder, yeah. the Thunder will roll. A lot of athletes on this. I love the Bears, Bernsey. I know you do. And last I week I gave you, you a lot of a lot of grief about picking and getting your alma mater in a big game. I know. Here you I'm going to do the same. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to go with you had calling it. My twin daughter's alma mater. How about yes, that? There you go. At least yeah. I got a little connection there. Yeah. Okay, and the last game we want to take a look at is really kind of the co game of the week this week. It's up in the mother load, and we like to say the mother load league is a mother for good reason because there's always great competition up there. There's always a handful of teams that are really, really good, and it's no different this year. Although yeah. the players have changed a little bit this season. Yeah. Yeah, you know, usually we talk about Calaveras and Sonora duking it out for the Mother Load League title. Well, Sonora is down uh, and really struggling to put it together. This looks like the year that their their, their run in the Mother Load League will come to an end. Uh, Amador is ranked number three in our in our small school uh, poll, and then you have Calaveras, another top ten team that is is seemingly finding its stride under uh, under first year coach Doug Clark. Uh, Calaveras has to go to Sutter Creek to play Amador. I think this is Amador's year. A, a, a ton of successful talent coming up from the JV team. They've got some key returning players, uh, and they're playing at home. I think this is the game that they take a big step forward towards that mother low league crown. Uh, of course, you still have to go through Sonora, but uh, if Amador can get past Calaveras, it's really going to set them up nice. I agree. I'm yeah. picking Amador in this one. And remember, Amador is a great program. Just four or five years ago, they were playing for a state title yeah. Yeah. under Coach Bill Baker. Uh, so. They enjoy a lot of success, typically. Yeah. But uh, recently, like you said, it's been Calaveras and Sonora all the way. Not this year. We're both picking Amador in this one. So that's a look at our predictions of five key games brought to you by Golden Bear Physical Therapy. Coming to you from Daniel Teixeira Memorial Stadium here in Manteca at Sierra High School. For James Burns, I'm Joe Cortez. Thanks for stopping by.